Here's a question and answer video. As always, I get awesome discussions through the comments on my videos and I had some awesome comments on the video last night, this algorithm growth video, if you missed the video. Oh, look up here, watch this, watch this, watch this. Oh, did you see that? <laughs> right there. <laughs> you can click that and then I'll take you to the video. Um, okay, so I've been having a fine discussion with some fine gentlemen here. Uniflair and Olive Atom. I am sorry if I totally slaughtered your names there. We've been going on a little bit about if, whether an algorithm calls another algorithm, whether we should consider the expense of that algorithm inside the algorithm we're calling that algorithm from. Um, and obviously we have some discussion about that. But then right here, Uniflare. Is it really that rare to see someone store a count as a constant value for a loop? I'm just wondering if I should stop doing that. So let me write some code just to ensure that I think I know what you're talking about. Say I have a data structure like, I don't know, my list. And my list comes from something. And I want to say four and I get zero I less than my list dot count um, I plus plus so on and so forth. And then you do some work in here. And a lot of this discussion we've been having yesterday is based on the fact that, hey, some data structures may compute the count uh, when you call count, right? instead of storing an int to keep track of the count value, instead the data structure may actually do some work in the background to figure out what, what the count is. And honestly, I'd be scratching my head if I ever saw that, not to say I wouldn't be surprised because I've seen worse in industry. Um, let's spend four to eight bytes storing an integer instead of calculating the count at every time because that seems like a waste of time. Anyway, going back to uh, Uniflare, is it really that rare to see? Well, let me get this out of the way here. Is it really that rare to see someone store a count as a constant value for a loop? So let's just say whoever wrote this data structure actually wrote the data structure in a way to calculate the count uh, in this list. We'll just do a simple list value. Say someone wanted to well to calculate the count every time I called count, so count would take a long time to run. So then one thing I think what you mean here is int the count gets my list dot count and you store away the count yourself uh, in a constant I guess you'd call this a constant I could make it more constant C if I say const on there well that's we'll stick with C sharp sure yeah so you could store this value away and then do that like so and now now you only call the count once good good you've solved the problem you've stored the int yourself instead of having whoever wrote the data structure store the int as they should have. The only red flag this throws in my head is the premature optimization. If you Google premature optimization or premature optimization is the root of all evil, then you'll bump into some interesting and rather intelligent discussions. Let me describe how premature optimization can hurt you and then we can validate that with some articles I found and some backup. And, but, uh, and it's not a war, I just want to point this out because it's very intelligent thing to consider. I'll often have students come to me and say, oh, Jamie, I optimized this code in our game, and now instead of taking 10 milliseconds to load the level, it only takes three. It's like, oh, that's cool, that's cool. So you, you optimize the, the level loading code, which happens once per level, which is not very often. But yet we're still having frame spikes and, and some lag What's going on with that? Well, I don't know, but my code runs really fast, Jamie. But, oh, that's cool. But what about those frame spikes? I, I, is the user really going to notice that you saved them 7 milliseconds of load time? Or are they going to notice the frame spikes? Because I'll tell you what, I'm noticing the frame spikes. Our frames take way too long. We're not hitting 30 frames a second. You know, maybe 10 frames a second at some point. We, we need to figure out what's really going on you know, to cause these frame spikes. I said, oh, yeah, that's a good point, Jamie. That's a good point. And the problem is who, that student who optimized the level loading code, they spent a lot of time and resources optimizing code that's called very infrequently, where we have a real problem with the frame spikes. Right? I would much rather have that student spend their time and energy optimizing the frame spikes so that our game is more enjoyable as the player plays it. All right, let's, let's, let's focus on optimizing the code that's called several hundred times or several thousand times 
per frame and at least in the game. Let's focus on that code. All right. Um, when you optimize code, I used to be like this when I was a brand new programmer. I'd, I'd try to write some slick code. And I knew, ooh, I could optimize this little piece of it because I know a lot about how this piece of it works and what the compiler is going to do here. I can write some crazy gnarly code to make this super fast. And it turns out the optimization is premature because I'm spending so much time working on code that's rarely called. And in my optimizations, I have ruined the readability and maintainability of that code. Right? It's, it's just ugly to look at. Readability, by far, saving programmer and engineering time. And also with readability, you can eliminate bugs because the less cryptic your code is, the more straightforward it is the less chances you have of introducing a bug. But let, let's do some reading here with this Wikipedia article. Optimization can reduce readability uh, and code that is only used to improve the performance. This may complicate programs or systems, making them harder to maintain and debug. As a result, optimization or performance tuning is often performed at the end of the development stage. Okay, and then Donald Knuth, famous computer scientist. We should forget about small efficiencies. Say about 97% of the time, premature optimization is the root of all evil. Yet we should not pass up our opportunities in that critical 3%. Critical 3% in this case would be what is causing our frames to spike? Don't spend your time optimizing some level load code that the user's not even going to notice. But what's making the frame spike? That's the critical 3%. We should focus on that. Premature optimization is a phrase used to describe a situation where a programmer lets performance considerations affect the design of a piece of code. This can result in a design that stinks. Right? That's essentially what it's saying. You're so busy optimizing that your design stinks because it's not readable, it's not maintainable, it's not elegant. Anyway, sorry, I'm starting to rant here a little bit. Uh, when deciding whether to optimize a specific part of the program, a doll's, Amdahl's law, I've, I've, I've never heard of this, but I clicked on this and read a little bit. It was kind of interesting. I encourage you to do the same. The impact on the overall program depends very much on how much time is actually spent in that specific part, which is not always clear from looking at the code without a performance analysis. Okay, you just can't look at your code and say, oh, I think it's going to spend most of this time right there. No. The tool that tells you that is a profiler. When I was working at EA Games, I was working on a prototype, and we were trying to get it out the door, and I was coding and coding like mad, and I was just throwing algorithms out as fast as I can, not really thinking about them, because we had to get this prototype done quickly. Well, that's fine and dandy until people started playing my prototype, and there was lag. There was frame spikes. We were getting probably 5 to 10 frames a second. I was stressing out. I'm like, oh, no, I've written thousands of lines of code. Where's the problem? Where's the problem? Well, we do what we always do in games. I pulled out a profiler. I execute the profiler. I say, hey, profiler, go tell me what's wrong with my code. And it gave me this huge printout and report and said, okay, well, your code's spending a few milliseconds there, a few milliseconds there. Spending a whole ton of time right here in this function call, which calls this function, which calls this function, which calls this function thousands of times, which is actually taking up a bulk of your frame. And so I, oh, through that, I was able to target just one loop out of that entire game I had worked on. One little loop. I went to that loop and I saw, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's a that's a terrible algorithm. I went and optimized it. Frame spike gone. I was the hero. Woohoo! You know, it's cool because we put the bugs in and then people love us when we pull the bugs out and <laughs> anyway. Going back to that discussion, is it really rare to see someone store a constant value for a loop? Um I haven't seen it, to be honest. I yeah, I just haven't. I, I, I but I, you know what? I do remember as a brand new programmer, I used to do that. I used to be like, oh well, if I store this int, then I won't call this function. And well, some languages will inline the function, and even if they don't inline the function, and the function actually returns an int, whereas they don't calculate the value, then yeah, just call the function. All right, so Uniflare throws in uh, some awesome points here. It says micro optimization is not bad practice, and I don't think it's a bad practice either, as long as you're optimizing what needs to be optimized for sure. 
The purpose of a good code is to be fast to read and understand by you, your computer, and most importantly, in the, in the, in the book of Jamie, most importantly, the people who might use it too. Some micro-optimizations might like defining a few variables in local space when they're not supposed to change to avoid computations helps making your code faster and more clear. I, I, I disagree on the more clear thing because where I did here, you know, I just, just call count there. I don't think this is clear. And also, if, if count's literally just returning an int, then there's no point in us storing that int. I mean, honestly, if you want to know, go look at the code. Right? A lot of the code we use these days, we can inspect that code, view that code ourselves in .NET and use a decompiler, uh, many of the other languages, open source stuff. Go look at the code there. But honestly, before I looked at I wouldn't even look at the code. I just call count. And then once I have written the code and it's out and it's good, then use a profiler and be like, oh, well, this part of your code's actually bad. So don't litter all of your code doing this. When really it's just one little area of your code that gets called thousands of times that you could optimize. And maybe calling count isn't the problem. Maybe it's something actually inside your loop that's causing your algorithm to slow down. A uh, very good point here, though. Olive, 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 Olive. Sorry, I'm probably totally ruining your name here. Um, vector3 target position equals raycast dot target hit dot get component. So a lot of dots in here. Uh, dot variable dot 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 oh, look at all these dots <laughs> uh, good 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 stressing that out there makes the following code either more readable and faster honestly if you're double dotting which you're doing more than double dotting here that makes me feel kind of perverted because it's like i'm reaching deep into this object's private parts and i just don't want to go there each access to an encapsulated variable makes your computer follow many pointers if not compile if not compiler optimize and use every of it at, and, and every use of it in your code makes some 150 character long statements will never be as clear as something like camera dot main dot look at target position. Anyway, I thought, thought this was great. Again, I'm not against optimization. I'm just against optimizing stuff that we don't know if it needs to be optimized or not. So going back to this comment, is it really rare to see someone store count as a constant value for a loop? Yeah. I, I I could see someone being bit by that a long time ago and then wanting to store constants all the time instead of actually just calling count themselves. Uh, so just be careful of that. Be aware. I think the wisest, smartest, most intelligent thing you can do if you really want to wonder whether you should call that count or not is, one, call the count, optimize later if the profiler tells you the problem is at that location in your code. And then, two, if you really want to know... Go look at the code for count. If count's returning an int, oh, don't stress. Call the function. Yeah, calling functions has a little bit of overhead, but still, it's so minute to the actual algorithm and code you're going to write in your loop. It's, don't premature optimize. Let's focus on the things that are actually costing us time. Uniflare, Olive, thank you so much for your comments and your participation. I hope you guys continue to engage with me throughout the future videos. I learned so much from you guys engaging with me. And you guys, so a lot of y'all ask questions. I don't know the answers to them. Like, oh, I better go research that. I better go research that. In fact, Uniflare, you said from a learner, you, get, you gave all these points and good thoughts here. And they said, from a learner, so take it with a pinch of salt. Hey, I'm learning. Okay, we're all learning. This, this is awesome. I'm not going to take it with a pinch of salt because it's obvious you're thinking about these things and asking excellent questions. And for those of you who don't engage on my channel, don't comment. Ask questions. Raise your hand. How are we supposed to learn together if we don't engage? Okay, so I'm not going to take this with a pinch of salt because I respect everyone who will engage on my channel and not troll. Okay, troll comments, I throw those away. But anyone who wants to engage, ask a question. The only stupid question is the unasked question. So if you don't ask the question, then that's the stupid question. No, ask the question. All right, I, I, I'm not going to take that with a pinch of salt. I think that's awesome. Olive, it's Tom, you say here, sorry for my English. You know what? Obviously, I, I can't speak your language. I can't even pronounce your name. Right? I don't know. But don't worry about the English. All right? I think your English is great. I'm just happy that you both engaged and commented and asked questions. Made, made this channel more than just, oh, Jamie's preaching and pontificating, and he lives far away and has this excellent YouTube channel. So everything that Jamie says must be correct. You guys know I'm not perfect. I appreciate all your feedback and engaging with me. Excellent learning opportunity. Let's keep rocking and rolling.